Welcome to Make the Grade with the success doctor, Stephen Green, where you'll discover actionable strategies to help your student to reach their academic goals, to excel at standardized testing, and to plan for the college admissions process painlessly. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Green. Don't forget to do that. Hey, everybody. Steve Green, I'm back. Make the Grade podcast. How is everybody doing today? It is a beautiful day here. And uh, we have a great guest today, Dr. Scott Wise. Scott has a great program. I love it. In fact, I love it so much, I'm going to try to help everybody get access to it. And uh, I want Scott to give you his take on it. It's called Test Camp. Excellent stuff. Let me tell you a little bit about him. Dr. Scott Wise, 40 plus year career in teaching and in teacher education. He was the president of the Association of Teacher Educators of Florida. And uh, he and his colleagues have assembled a group of highly talented students, educators, and tech professionals to bring you a dynamic project he calls Test Camp, dedicated to providing affordable test skills training that empowers students to experience test success. So Scott, welcome, how are you? Uh, very good. Another day in paradise down here in Florida. Yeah, yeah. Don't rub it in, man. It's nice here today, though. It's yeah. like 70 here today. You know, what, what do you need? How, much, how hey, hot does that have to be? My whole family's from uh, the Pittsburgh area, so I understand. There I always go. used to think it was, uh, I w- I, we always came and visited in the summer, all my cousins, and I was like, well, what a beautiful place, Pennsylvania, because we were always there in the summer. <laughs> I came back up one winter ago, oh my. <laughs> Not that bad. This is in like Antarctica or something. I know. It I is get when, it. You live, when you're from Daytona Beach, it is. I get it. I get it. Yeah. So <laughs> just, just to be completely clear here, Dr. Wise is from the uh, space coast of Florida. Right. And I'm sure he will remind us of that multiple times in the next 30 minutes. Yeah. But no, it is, it's not. Hey, listen, he lives in a nice place. I'm jealous. <laughs> I'm jealous. Yeah, well, we've got uh, our problems here. too. Just watch late night TV. You'll see we got plenty of our problems yeah, down there. It's, it's, it's all right. It, it's yeah. we whatever. So uh, look, it doesn't really matter where you live, what yeah. you do, who you are, where you go to school. If you take a test in yeah. your life as a student, as a professional, because a lot of people have to recertify and take certification right. tests. This is this is super helpful. Yeah, and, and, and that's what's really you, changed. Yeah, you're right, Stephen. Yeah, and and listen, to those of you who listen to my podcast know I do not, as a matter of rule, endorse uh, or or whatever, advocate for products. Almost never. I talked to Scott. I saw what he has. I really like this. I think this is something everybody should take a look at. And best of all, I'll let him tell you about this more. This is priced ridiculously low. This is an incredible value, but we'll get into that. Um, Let's start with this. You got a huge... uh, background and a resume in education. As the cliche goes, you probably forgot more about education than most people know. Um, you know, give us a little history, a little bio- biography, and then how Test Camp came to be. Yeah, so, you know, uh, growing up in Daytona Beach um, and here on the east coast of Florida, when I went to school, we took one, maybe two standardized tests through my entire career, all the way through school. And it wasn't until the 80s or so when I became a teacher and then I was uh, actually teaching teachers for a couple decades there that I realized that the tail's wagging the dog now. I mean, anybody who's listening to this is under 35 years old realizes how important testing is out in the schools. Um, Who you are and how you're identified out there in schools, your success in schools is determined by tests. Wouldn't you think so? Uh, It's it's it's. Let's just be clear, because some people may not even extend it to this. Yeah. It's the tests themselves, A. Yeah. Right. More importantly, how the scores get interpreted yeah. at a school district or a county level, at a state level, even right. at a national level. It impacts funding. Yes. Right. It impacts um, accreditation sometimes. Right. It impacts the ability to bring in new programming. Some people would argue it disadvantages uh, better school districts. Yes. And, and, and skews towards um, more at-risk school districts, which I'm not saying is good or bad, but in terms of funding, it, it can be. Right. Um, in, in Florida, yeah. it's even gone as far as we're one of the few states that's now tying test scores to teacher salaries. Imagine that. And in many cases, the teachers mm-hmm. I put out into the field are getting graded on students who don't come to their class. So mm-hmm. imagine that. You're a third-grade teacher. The test scores in third grade are then applied and... You, you didn't even teach that student. 
but the but test yet it's impacting your livelihood. Exactly. And that's how powerful the tests have become. There's mm. a big movement. Uh, maybe you've heard of it in the last six or eight years was called opt out. And a lot of the parents and all were saying, you know what, we're just had it with us. We're going to opt out. We're not going to have our kids take all these tests. Well, we decided to take a different route. Um, I didn't grow up that way that you opt out of something because it's a challenge. So we decided we were going to go after this and just make people better test takers. So that's where this was really born. Uh I know state to state, the names of the tests might be different. Like I'm in Pennsylvania. Our stand, big standard tests are called Keystones. That's right. right. Pennsylvania is the Keystone State. Yeah, I ours is the, the Sunshine State. I was going to say it was right. the Gator, so, the Gator test. <laughs> <laughs> do people do this when they take the test? I mean, you can't yeah, see this. Right. I'm yeah, doing the, uh, the Gator, gator hand chomp. thing. Yeah, the Chomp. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's what it's called, the Gator Chomp? That's right. Oh, I didn't think it had a name. Oh, <laughs> I just yeah. thought, okay, okay whatever. <laughs> Um, we, 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 we trademark everything here. So here's the thing. There's 50 states. There's probably 50 different high stakes tests on right. top of that. And we're just talking middle school, high school level, right? Elementary. That's right. Right. Then you also got the, the uh, you know, the notorious SAT and ACTs, yep. which I, you know, very involved with prepping kids for that. And you got all kinds of other things out there. Um, so let's, we're on the, you and, and me by extension here, we are on the solution side. We're not going to complain about it. We both right. know it exists. That's Parents right. know it exists. Kids know it exists. They deal with it. Um, so you're, you have spent a lot of time and a lot of energy and a lot of your uh, uh, brain power putting together a solution. Right. And, and um, so this is what's interesting, Steve. What we didn't, re- you know, we set up the pilot for this and we were thinking, well, uh, where can we go? Well, I teach teachers for a living. And those students, so think about those college students, they all have to go out and take their licensure exams. Mm -hmm. The pass rate on that is somewhere in the 70 to 80% range. They're paying hundreds of dollars to take these exams over and over again. And that's kind of how I got lured into this and why our pilot has dealt probably 95% of it has dealt with teachers. Either people are going in, they're teacher candidates, or they've already been hired by a school district. And now mm-hmm. they need to come back and pass their tests. And that's where we became very popular. So it's, it's become a licensure or certification yeah. uh, barrier. Exactly. Ba- back in my day, I'm not sure. We're, we're, we're kind of contemporaries. We're, we're both mm-hmm. in our late 30s, yeah, yeah. by the way, people. Yeah, right. um, <laughs> there was a thing called the NTE. You remember that's that? Right. Mm-hmm. NTE stood for the National Teacher Exam. That's right. And to be a teacher, you had to pass it. And I, I, I forget what the standard was. I think it was 80%. It wasn't that rigorous right then they had a general one then they also had a subject matter one so if you were an elementary school teacher you just had to do the nte but if you're let's say a high school math teacher like some people i know won't say names um you would have to take an nte for math that's right and um i don't know what i don't think those tests exist anymore i think it's completely state level now it all got it all got privatized out by two major publishing companies Mm -hmm. and so every state decides who they want to partner with or and we won't get too deep into this, but yeah, right. so they either partner with one of the two companies or they create their own. Kentucky's a good example of someone who decided, no, we want to kind of go with this on our own. But you're absolutely right. There's three tests for most teachers. We'll make this quick. Uh, a general knowledge test. Am I smarter than the, the average fifth grader? You know, it's just a general baseline test. Yes. Um, but you're right. A subject area exam here in Florida, there's up to 40 of those. So are you a middle school math teacher or your elementary, your pre-K, what are you? And mm-hmm. then you're right, that old NTE, what you're talking about there is now called the professional education exam. Some places yes. it's called learning and principles of learning and teaching. Uh, yes, but what do you the... know about being a teacher? Mm-hmm. So you are correct. In uh, some states like Colorado, one test, they leave it up to the colleges. So they don't, but here in Florida, three tests, Mississippi, four tests. It could be four, five, six hundred dollars for teachers mm-hmm. um, to have to go through these exams. So that's where we started. But that's not what we do. Uh, we, what we want to do is really get to the students. So that's why we're so interested in uh, talking to folks like you. So I'm a parent. Listen, my, this podcast, but this is the Make the Great Podcast. My guest, uh, Dr. Scott Wise, coming at us from Daytona, Florida. All right, let's look. And uh, anyway, this is about the mission of this podcast is parents <clears throat> to give you actions to help right. you help your students maximize their education. Let's make their lives easier and more productive in the education realm. Scott, what, what is the fundamental, and we're going to use an education term here because we're teachers. What is the fundamental objective of Test Camp? Uh, to turn folks into uh, performers. That's, that's it. what it is. You have to think of testing as a performance. 
And a lot of folks don't, you know, they think, well, it's, it, there's certain things that can happen. It's a matter of luck. You know what? No, testing is a performance. And uh, that becomes particularly important, as you know, because you do a lot of SAT training. You just can't do what you do in school. It's a whole different ball game out there. It's not short term. You're not just remembering what the teacher told you last week. I mean, it's, it's just so much bigger and you have to be a, a successful performer. So what we do is we look at what are the routines the successful performers go through. Sports, musicians, it doesn't matter. Think about a successful performer. You know who's a successful performer you might not think about? Podcasters. You think about the Kardashians, you know, people give them a lot of grief. And I, you know, I don't believe in this being famous for famous, but they certainly do know what they're doing. And it's not by accident. They know what they're doing. They have the knowledge, they have the skills, and they do not lack for confidence. Mm -hmm. So they are performers and they're making a ton on being a performer. And that's what we talk about, knowledge, skills, and confidence. That's what you have to do to be successful on your test. I, I, I totally agree with it. I, I, I love it. I, when I'm working with, an, I, there's an SAT next week that this may not be relevant right. whenever somebody's no. listening to this, but... Well, I, one of the things I constantly talk about with students is get a plan, master your plan, and then just do the plan a gazillion times. Yes. So when you get into the exam, for better or worse, yeah, are we, are we teach to a test? Yes, but that's one of the things you need to do sometimes, unfortunately. And then you go in and it's become so natural that you just execute. I, I, li I really like that performance metaphor because it's true. It's the same with anything. You know, if you're, you're shooting a free throw in basketball, you know, you right. practice a million times. So when you get into a game in a higher pressure situation, it's a natural mo motion and a natural exercise for you. Um, let's, let's get down to some sort of like just root stuff. So somebody is interested in test camp. Yeah. They would subscribe, right? I mean, right. It, it, and which, is, which is very inexpensive, like very inexpensive. Right. And um, they would log into a site and they could go to different modules. So the, give us some examples. What, what can somebody expect from their experience here? Yeah, what makes us um, different and why we're a good fit for you is that um, you're helping, remember, it's knowledge, skills, and then the confidence. Where you're helping them with the knowledge, particularly the content knowledge. And we're adding on top of that the actual test-taking skills. So when they come into the camp, if you think about that, it kind of is a metaphor, the test camp, they come in, mm -hmm. um, they get a pass for 120 days. It runs all the way through Labor Day for our summer camp thing we have going on right now. Um, so 120 days, they can go in, they can go into math, four different levels of math that start uh, fairly easy, sixth, seventh grade runs all the way up through 10th, 11th grade. Um, all the fundamentals of mathematics, they can go into reading, writing, English, uh, social studies. We have several different ones. We just finished our reading one, uh, just came on board here recently. But what they do that's different is they go and they acquire the practice of test taking skills. And we have what's called a problem solving system. And this is from the research. This is not something we just made up. What is somebody thinking when they see a problem? What's the first thing they're thinking? What do they do next? What did they do next? That sort of thing. So that's what we do. We take them through, we're the place where they can go and practice all the things you tell them to do, but then they can actually go through and, and have an opportunity to practice those things. Uh, would this be just as useful, say, for a junior in high school, an eighth grader, a fourth grader? Is there any uh, college student? Is, is there any age? Yes, they all jump in at different levels. And it, uh, you and I are old enough to remember back in the day when they had the reading system called SRA. SRA, you yes, jumped in at the You know, jumped in the yellow level. When you're done, you go to the green level and so on. So we have four different levels. And some people jump in at the very first level, you know, the very bottom. And they, they start there because we don't cover as many competencies there. So mm -hmm. like, for example, in math, you'd only be doing numbers and a little bit of algebra. But when you go to level two, it's numbers, then algebra, but what else are we going to stick in there? Some geometry. Level three, what are you going to stick in there? Some measurement. Now you got to know all that. All those are going to be on. Then when you get to level four, now we're sticking data in there. So you got probability and statistics. So that's a great question. It can be anywhere generally from fifth graders on. It could be younger, but usually from fifth grade up. Mm -hmm. and, and we do have college students that use it too because they want to go back and make sure that they have the fundamentals that they need. So even though it's subject related, it's really subject independent because the goal is to teach the larger skill. That's right. Less than say the particular detail or whatever that's coming in that particular module. That's right. 
When I wrote um, my dissertation, I came up with this word. I came across a word called inculcated. So I'm very proud of myself to be able to use this word inculcated. And Ooh. you're right. While they're going through the test skills, they are inculcated whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> in the content. I like that. that is a good word. Yeah, well, see, because they're looking at hundreds, they're looking at hundreds of different questions. Um, I think we're up to 4,000 individual questions now. So when you're in math, you're looking at, we're not teaching. You, this is what you do. You teach them how to do those algebra. Mm -hmm. We're, Sometimes, yes. we're just giving yeah. them all kinds of exposure to those. And so they're seeing hundreds of them. They say, well, what's the right answer? What, what, could, what could not be the right, you know, that sort of thing. So they're, be, they're being immersed, you might want to say, in the content. But you're absolutely right. What we're doing, though, is teaching this five-step problem-solving system. Yeah, I, which, which I think is so needed. I, I, I don't want to get too deep into this because I don't want to get off track. But I, I had to go into a school this week and do an observation. And I got to be honest with you, it was very disheartening because I go in the room and I was observing the child. I was there basically advocating for the child. They, they were having some behavioral challenges. That's not important. Mm -hmm. But I'm watching the class. And you know what the teacher did? They put up on it. Every kid's got a Chromebook or some electronics. The teacher flashed up on the screen a, 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 a basically incomplete sentences. And they're teaching ninth grade biology. The center of the, the, the control center of the cell is the blank. Now, every kid's got this on the Chromebook. They got, they're seeing it on the smart board or the screen. Well, and the teacher says, the, the teacher didn't even say, anybody know what the answer is? Mm. The teacher just takes a, uh, the stylus and writes in nucleus. Mm. Next sentence. The uh, part of the cell that creates energy is the blank. Now, the answer is mitochondria. And, and this mm. went on. I'm, I'm thinking, is this teacher, and I'm like you. I, I was a teacher. I trained teachers. Are they ever right. going to ask a critical thinking question? Yeah, right. Anything that? second level synthetic at all. Right. 35 minutes later, the kids are falling asleep. And frankly, I didn't blame them. Right. And, and I'm not trying to throw this teacher under the bus. But uh, like, here's an easy question to ask. We now learned that the mitochondria makes energy for the cell. Okay, students. What would happen if a cell somehow didn't have any mitochondria? What would be the effects of that? So you got to think, hmm, well, it is, it, it, you know, it, old fashioned level two, level three synthetic stuff, right? Right. So it was, it was very disheartening. Of course, I wasn't there to critique the teacher. I wasn't there doing an observation. I'm not the assistant principal or whoever that, but. Right. So the parent says to me later, how did the kid do? And, and the kid was like falling asleep. But I don't think his issue was because it was because partly the instructional style. And I said to them later, I said to the student later, how, how do you think you're going to test on this? And it's the same thing. The teacher will put basically the blank page and they just write the words in. Yeah. It's, 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 this is, there's a systemic issue at play here too that you and I are not going to solve, certainly not in this conversation. But, um, well, we're going to try. Uh, we're well, going to try, Steve. And I'll uh, tell you why. There you go. There's an old joke that says if you and I go out camping, and we're asleep and a bear comes after us, how fast do you have to run to save yourself? And the old okay. joke is, faster you than have the to other run guy. faster than me. <laughs> right. So this is why, this is where this was born. Um, when I was teaching, and when I was teaching teachers, that's what we would say. If you ask those kids to do critical thinking in your classroom, they'll respond in a heartbeat because in the many mm -hmm. of the other, all you have to do is outrun the other teachers who are showing PowerPoints and are doing these mm -hmm. things and haven't evolved yet into good teachers. And so that's why we're teaching that's a, it's funny you should say that because our problem solving system is teaching critical thinking five mm -hmm. steps. What's the problem? Nope. Do I, do I solve this problem now and invest time in it now, or do I wait till later? Let's look at what the worst possible answers are. Does that leave us the best answers? And if so, make a choice and move on. It's that simple. Critical thinking, five steps. We call it I D E A S as an acronym ideas, identify mm -hmm. the problem, Decide, eliminate, assume, and solve, move on. But it's interesting you would bring that up because that's exactly what we're teaching is critical thinking. Yeah, and, and, and listen, nobody's going to be in eighth grade their whole life, right? Eventually, they're going to get out into the world. They're going to get into real-life situations. They're going to be employed. Or they're going to run businesses. And this is where this really comes in handy. And, and it, it's a big debate. You know, is it the school's job to teach test-taking skills? Is the school's job to teach this? Yes, I don't is. want to go that direction. I, I believe it is, at least on yeah. some level. Yeah. Um, I don't know that it should be 90% of the curriculum. I think there's a balance of all things here. Um, 
But this, let me just say yeah. this for you real quick before mm. you move on. It's interesting you would bring that up because where this was born and it was in the 1980s. My idea for starting this was in the 80s at University of Florida. Dr. Bob Myrick, and he, if you were a guidance counselor in this country, you know his name. Some of this is what I got from him. You just said it's not eighth graders. It's not. Yes, it is. It's your whole life. Think of it. Anytime you look at any situation, you have to identify the problem. What's the situation? the guys across the street robbing somebody or whatever it is, you have to decide, do I want to get involved? You have to then eliminate what you're going to do. You're just going to run over there and take the gun off of them or, you know, then you have to make a plan and say, yes, I'm going to do this. And then you have to take action. It's, it is, you're absolutely, it's, it's, it's just being a human being, mm -hmm. but you have to have the skills to know what to do when you're confronted with a situation. And when you take the SATs next week, you're confronted with a situation 80 times. So you, like you said, it has to be like muscle memory. You have mm -hmm. to know when you hit that problem, you have to know, okay, what's this problem asking me? And do I want to solve this problem now? Or do I want to move on and come back around to this the next time? The, the, the interesting challenge I find as an educator, and I, and I know you're, well, I don't want, I want to put words in your mouth, but I think you're going to agree with me is the, the solutions to a lot of these challenges exist and are pretty well known and are available to people, it, the hard thing is then to get access to it, right? Yes. Like, like all the things you're saying, and you know, we're going back 40 years, right? The eighties, I mean, you know, right. when we were little kids. <laughs> right, that's right. <laughs> um, but, but so it's like, why, why isn't this already happening, right? This is why I think what your, your initiative with Test Camp and why we want to get behind it is so important because we're taking ideas that have been percolating for years formalizing them into a really easy system that people can use that anybody can have access to. Mm -hmm. And it's solving, or at least addressing, maybe solving, somebody could argue is too strong a word. It's definitely addressing an issue that's just everywhere, right? Yeah. Lack right. of critical thinking, lack of ability to perform in a high stakes test because of, you don't see them that often and, and nobody right. really knows you what you're getting done. skills, right? Yeah. You so, skills. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah, the last ahead. piece of this real quick, I tell you too, um, I know you got about five minutes left here, but yeah, we're okay. we're uh, good. you got, um, you know, we just talked about that situation you went through, you know, what was the situation? Do I get involved? What don't I do? What do I do? And it takes some actions kind of thing. But then the most important piece is go back, reflect on that later. Mm -hmm. I know that for, as soon as you hang up for this thing, I know what you're going to do. You've already told me you're going to go back and think, how could I have made that podcast better? You know, because you approached this, you had the knowledge, yes. you had the skills and the confidence to do this, but it wasn't an nice, accident. Man. It wasn't know, an accident. A lot of work doing this. Right. And that's what you do when you prepare for these tests, too. That's mm -hmm. why you don't have to make 100 percent. It's generally in the low 70s is what they ask for, 80 percent at the highest, because they want you to go back and reflect and say, now, and that was the starting point. Taking this test was the starting point. Now go back and see what you could do to become better the next time you take a test just like this. And you get better and better. But you're right, Steve. There's nowhere until now for them to go and practice this. Mm. You, can, you can practice over and over and get your skills in a nice private place online. Nobody around to see you. And you can do this as often as you want to. That's what we wanted to provide. We're in the yeah. twilight of our career. We mm -hmm. think we're going to change the world. And we've changed the teaching world. We're changing that. But we got to get this out to the students. Well, I'm trying to do what I can to help because I'm yeah. behind this and I, there's absolutely no downside to this at all. Absolutely right. none. The worst thing that happens is you, you don't get any better, which I think is unlikely if you really plug in and put any sort of honest effort. You, you have a, you have an interesting, um, uh, we, I, you know, some of the notes that I got sent here, success as a lifestyle, right? That's right. That's one of your tenants. Mm -hmm. Testing is performance. We talked about that a little bit, performance, success, the importance of it practicing, getting a situation, practicing and skills. Let's talk about success as a lifestyle. Yeah. It's a mindset, right? Talk, talk, tell me a little bit about what your feelings are here. Well, again, it's what you did to get ready for today. I don't think there was any doubt in your mind that this was going to go well or as close as you wanted to do because you prepared. You prepared in advance. You did the homework it took to be ready. You've practiced this. I got a feeling you've done podcasts before you even started broadcasting them. And then after you performed, you went back and you reflected on that to see. So it's, it's the knowledge, the skills, and the confidence. And you apply this to everything you do. 
this isn't the only thing you do. You probably got six or eight other things going on. You've made this a lifestyle where you know the importance of preparing, practicing, and performing. So that's kind of what we're talking about here. And then you just get it, you get in, it becomes a routine. And guess what? Sometimes you fail. And man, that's, a, that yeah, that's, love that's what I love. I like the broken road. I don't want that <laughs> thing to go. I want to, you know, I want to get off the path. Anytime something smack, that's the time you're going, okay, I get it. This is why I'm supposed to, this is where I'm going to learn right here. Ooh, well, there's a lot to digest here, Scott. Um, Steve Green with Dr. Scott Wise. This is the Make the Grade podcast. We're about giving you actions, parents to help you help your kids. And this is an easy one you can take. How, do, how does somebody find out about Test Camp? So it's the Test Camp, T H E. Ironically, okay. the guy who owns testcamp.com lives right there in Philadelphia. He owns, ah. He's thinking about giving us that. Uh, yeah, I'll, URL, I'll see if I can uh, go so, give him a little bit. Yeah. Visit. So he's testcamp.com. Uh, he had a tutoring company 15 years ago and never used it. But hmm. we are the test camp, all one word.com. And then you can just go right on the front page. You'll see right there. It's, um, you know, it okay. says that what we're doing is we're running a summer test camp and and like you mentioned it when people see the price they're gonna go you got to be kidding me you know we're almost priced it where it's it's ridiculous because we just want everybody to do it i think it's a couple bucks or something you get a pass and your pass includes everything so it's like going into disney world you know we're all from disney down here and it's when you go into the theme park you just don't get to go into one course you don't it's just not just math you get everything you can go wherever you want for as, as long as you want in all the different subjects. And we expect to have all eight, at least eight subjects up uh, for this summer. Six of them are already up right now. TheTestCamp.com. Yep. Check it out. Um, Scott, you want to share anything else? I mean, any hobbies or anything? I mean, first of well, all, no, you, I professional want to talk experience about you. is so well, impressive. I want to talk but... about you you for a minute. I don't talk about you for a minute because you remind me a lot of um, what we call the office of instructional resources down here at the university of Florida. Mm. You know, people would say, well, wait a minute. Why do I have to prepare for tests? I went and got a tutor or I went and got this, you know? um, Well, so what is the meld between folks like you who do a good job at this professionally and what we're doing, go back to the problem solving system. When you teach people how to go through that, you say, look at this problem identify the problem. I know you do that. I don't even have to come to your sessions. That's first where you start. Where we switch off from you is then you talk about how to solve it. You start talking about ways to solve. We don't. Hmm. See, we go in a different direction. We're saying, do you decide to solve this problem and invest time now or not? Hmm. See, because we're about the test taking skills. So some people would say, well, wait a minute. We're competing against each other. No, 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 we're not. Mm -hmm. We're complimenting each other. Yeah. So that's why I was so excited when we learned about what you know what you guys are doing up there. We're just we're thrilled to have you be one of our partners. Let, let's terrific. see what the audience thinks. Here, get that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> we have a big studio audience here. It's uh, hundreds of people, all socially distanced, and they, they're loving it. They are very. That was incredible. Yeah, um, very good. <laughs> listen, there's so many moving parts in education. There's so many moving parts in this. The part we, you, are trying to address here is a very important one because if you can't show what you know in a test, sometimes people assume you don't know it. That's and right. unfortunately, in my, look, I've been tutoring 20 plus years. The road is littered with people who study, go in feeling confident. I know this. I got it down. Get a 78 or whatever. And then did they know four-fifths of the information? Probably not. Yeah. They probably knew all of it. But yeah. th- that gap between the comprehension and the application that's call whatever you want challenge the game of, you know, being good at school. That's what we're trying to, um, that's what we're trying to put into place. Yeah. You didn't um, even know it, but one of our slogans was that we were, were you know, we threw up a lot of different little uh, slogans and logos and that kind of thing. And one was showcase your education because hmm. so many people have an education. They just don't know how to showcase it. And uh, so we're playing with that a little bit. We haven't been using it lately, but you're at, you're on the right track. Well, yeah, I li- I li- it's a good tagline. I like that. Yeah, tagline. Exactly. But you know what, too? See, here, here's the thing. And I don't, in my business, I don't cross paths with this that often, but I met a woman. I was working with a woman last summer, right in the middle, major, you know, big, big COVID uh, time. She was trying to go become a nurse. 
Everything was done. She'd done every academic course she could. She could done her practicals. You know what was holding her back? She yeah, couldn't the pass the exam. Yeah, that's right. And, and she, I think, you had to get 100. I, I think you had to get 150. She got like 148. I don't yeah. know. It was a weird scale. It wasn't like out of 100. Um, yeah. She'd taken it two times. And you're right. It's not, it's, not, it's not like buying a cup of coffee to take these tests. They're expensive. No. That's right. And she was very frustrated and she was That's about right. to give up. And the hospital that was uh, holding a job for her basically said, look, we need you here by August 1st. Yep. Not here by then. We're going to have to find somebody else. It was a state, a licensure thing. She could not take the job without the position. Yep. Without take the, out the word nurse, without put the in the word thing. teacher. Yeah. yeah. Just take out the word nurse, put in the word and teacher. And you hear, but we work with hundreds of people. Yep. It's so same. it's the same story. So yeah, it was, and it was unfortunate. Now the happy ending was, and, and it wasn't all because of me, but I, you know, I had a right. role in it. She passed, right. not by okay. much, but don't matter. Yeah. Wins a win. Um, right. But I see yeah, so many parallels: teaching exams, CPA That's exams, right. bar exams, yeah. insurance licensure exams, uh, financial advisor exams. There's some tests. Tests don't end when you graduate from college or high no. school. No. You get a whole test. You got tests. Driver's yeah. test. <laughs> you want to hear a funny story? You want to hear? I'll tell you a story, and then you can tell me one story, and then we're out of here. All right. When I moved to Pennsylvania, the Keystone State, uh, I had to go to get my new driver's license. I had been living in the beautiful Garden State of New Jersey. <laughs> anyway, I go to the test center, the same place the 16-year-olds go to get it. I had to take the written exam for the permit. I assumed I'd walk in, show them my Jersey license. They would give me Pennsylvania one. No, 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 no. Go over there. I had to take the actual test. You know, the one with the stupid questions like, yeah, yeah. if you're going 48 miles an hour, how many car lengths should you be behind a car in front of you? Right. I mean, who knows? Who, I mean, does it really matter when you're driving? Well, I shouldn't really say that. But yeah. so I failed the test. It was a personal humiliation. I'm a test prep expert and yeah. I can't get 15 questions right on a test that most 16 year olds can pass. Right. So what do I do? I got to play the game. I get the book. Now they do it on an app. I get the right. book. I look through the book. I go back three days later because I had to wait three days and I passed. And this right. was the sort of thing where as soon as you got the fourth or fifth one wrong, it might have been three, you're out. It wasn't like yeah. you did the whole test and you got the score. As soon as you got the third or fourth question wrong, you were just booted. Yeah. So it was disheartening. And um, so I had to do, it was a lesson. Hey, this was not really about knowing how to drive. This yeah. was not about operating a car or in traffic. This was about knowing exactly how to pass this test. And um, I've told that story to a lot of people, but the point is I was not prepared. I didn't have a game plan and, it, right. and I didn't know how to execute that game plan. I got a game plan, studied the book, practiced it, went in and dealt with it. Yeah. So that's, you know, it was a personal testimonial to, to all these things. Um, well, we're going to wrap up in a second. Anything you want to share that we haven't yeah, talked well, about? What I would say in my little 60 second story would be just go watch the professional golfers this weekend on TV um, what's today? Friday. Guess where they were on Wednesday? Every one of them on Wednesday was walking around and playing on the course that was coming up for the weekend. Yeah, These are the play. professionals. Yep. These are the professionals that have played that course. And how many golf balls do you think they hit this week? Over hundreds. a thousand. Yes, yeah. over hundreds a day. And so these, that's what it takes. And a lot of folks have left us and they've talked about becoming professional test takers, basically. Because what does it mean to be a professional? That means that you understand the importance of preparing, you under and the knowledge, you under, understand the importance of having the skills, and then you understand the importance of having the confidence. So you can what we're really trying to do, and this takes us right back to where we started here today, was that we're trying to make professional, confident test takers out of all these students. So when they do become adults, they can go off and continue to use all these skills throughout their life, not just during their tests. Love it. Great stuff, Scott. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to come on. I know you're a very busy person and uh, you got a million balls in the air. So this is awesome. Uh, folks, the testcamp.com. Check it out. And uh, Scott, anything you want to leave us with? Like, I don't know, favorite recipe. Uh, I don't know. Favorite, it, Steve. Uh, I appreciate it. We had another rocket launch went up this week and uh -huh. um, 
A high today is 83 with a nice breeze off the ocean. So. Okay, so we're getting the weather, we're getting the weather report. <laughs> uh, hey, we'll talk to you next time. Hey, call me anytime. Uh, I will. I will. I appreciate it. And listen, this is something we can do again if you've got time. I'd love having you back on. Maybe we'll drill down a little deeper on something specific if you want. Hey, Steve Green, the Make the Grade podcast. I appreciate everybody listening. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Please share. Please tell people. I honestly feel the more people to get this information, not just about this incredible opportunity that uh, Scott has, but just in general, just actions you can take to maximize your education, the better. So we're wrapping up for today. Steve Green, let's roll it out here. Thanks again, audience. Yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. And we'll see you next time. You've been listening to Make the Grade with the success doctor, Stephen Green. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe. For more resources and support, please visit makethegrade.net.